Imagine having the ability to know what the future holds, to know how death will arrive, and to understand that there is no way to change it. What would you do in that moment? For Felix Nussbaum, the answer was clear. He had dedicated his life to art, and in his final years, he used his craft to illustrate the life of a Jew under the Nazi regime, sharing his terrifying experiences of being hunted and all that came with being Jewish during the Holocaust. This artist painted dozens of heart-wrenching scenes from his experiences in a concentration camp, which remained hidden for years. Fortunately, after many years, these paintings have been discovered, and although they are difficult to find, we can see them today. Prepare to witness the horrors of the Holocaust through the eyes of a man who lost his life in a concentration camp. Let's begin. Felix Nussbaum was born on December 11, 1904, in Osnabrück, Germany, into a respected and wealthy Jewish family. His parents, Philip and Rahul, recognized their son's artistic talent at an early age. His father was also an amateur artist. In addition to owning a blacksmith business, Felix's parents decided to encourage their son to develop his talent, supporting him as he attended various art schools across the country, from Hamburg to Berlin. In 1927, Felix held his own art exhibition and later participated in group exhibitions, designing a series of covers for an art magazine based in Berlin. In 1932, Felix applied to and was accepted into the Villa Massimo of the Berlin Academy in Rome. In October of the same year, Felix left Berlin and moved to Rome with his partner, Felke Platek, who was also a Jewish artist. Little did he know, he would never return to his homeland. In December 1932, Felix received the news that a fire had broken out in his Berlin studio, a space he had rented out to other artists in his absence. He lost more than 150 pieces in the flames and was understandably devastated. Just a few months later, in early 1933, the Nazi party came to power and the political and cultural atmosphere shifted dramatically. Dr. Josef Goebbels visited Rome and made a stop at the German Academy to meet with the students. Goebbels gave a lecture on Nazi artistic doctrine, explaining that Aryan race and heroism were the main themes that Nazi artists should develop. Felix quickly realized that his time at the academy was limited, as there was no place for him in the world of National Socialist art. However, the Nazi regime had an immediate impact on Felix's art, as he began to paint what he saw as the fall of civilization. His painting, Destruction, reflects his feeling of imminent doom, depicting a couple standing amidst architectural ruins and destroyed artworks. Forced to leave Rome and the Academy, but unable to return to Germany, Nussbaum and Platek moved to Alassio, Italy, where they lived comfortably with the support of Felix's parents. In 1935, Felix and Felker left Italy, crossing through Paris to Belgium. Felix continued to paint at each destination, finding solace in his work. Looking at his paintings from this period, it is clear that his growing discomfort and anxiety over the increasing danger to the Jewish community were ever-present. In 1940, German troops marched into Belgium. Felix Nussbaum was arrested, along with 7,000 others, and transported in a cattle car to the internment camp of St. Cyprian. He managed to escape and return to Brussels, where he hid with the help of a friend, an art dealer. Felix, who never stopped painting, depicted the horrors of life in the internment camp. His painting, Self-Portrait in the Camp, reflects the inhumane and humiliating conditions he experienced while there. In this work, he paints himself in the foreground, bearded, emaciated, and wearing dirty clothes, framed by barbed wire. Scattered bones can be seen in the sand, and skeletal prisoners are seen relieving themselves in a bucket. In my opinion, this image is quite harrowing. Throughout the time he spent in hiding, while living under the constant fear for his life, Felix continued to express himself through his art, relentlessly documenting the worsening conditions and the perpetual fear that the authorities would discover his hiding place. Felix recognized the inevitable and resigned himself to the fate predestined by his Jewish identity. He painted his people, the poor and the condemned. His works did not reflect hope or survival. Instead, he chose to paint from reality. He also painted one of his most recognized, though not widely famous pieces called 
self-portrait with a Jewish identity card. In this self-portrait, he depicts himself with the yellow star imposed on every Jew holding his identity card, the card that erased any hope of escape knowing there was no way to separate himself from that identity. He painted himself cornered, fully aware that there would be no way out. Another of his most striking works is titled Fear, also known as Self-Portrait with My Niece Mariana. In this painting, the anguish of a man clinging to his family is palpable. By this point, Felix had already escaped from his first experience in an internment camp, but he was still fighting and living with the uncertainty of not being caught alongside his family. In this painting, he is once again depicted in a corner, emphasizing the recurring sense of being trapped and the anxiety of not knowing where to go. Lastly, in 1944, he painted his final work, The Triumph of Death. In this piece, he reflects the hopelessness of the situation from his perspective. The skeletons are playing musical instruments amidst the ruins of modern society, a cultured society of science, technology, art and music. Among the skeletons behind an organ sits a figure that, although emaciated and malnourished, appears to be alive. Perhaps it is a self-portrait with a faint hope of including himself among the survivors, a hope that would never come true. Tragically, in July 1944, the Gestapo discovered the hiding place of Felix Nussbaum and Felke Platek. The couple was arrested and sent to the transit camp of Malinas, where, on July 31st, 1944, they were placed on the last transport to Auschwitz. On August 4th of that same year, they met their untimely death. Felix Nussbaum is now considered the artist of the Holocaust, and despite dying at just 40 years old in the gas chambers of Auschwitz, his art remains alive. A few months before his deportation, he told a friend who was hiding his paintings, When I perish, do not allow my pictures to die with me. Show them to the people. His art was practically forgotten for 25 years, as if it had suffered the same fate as its creator. However, in 1960, the only surviving members of Nussbaum's family learned that over a hundred canvases were rotting in the basement of Josef Grosfels, a Belgian dentist to whom the artist had made that request. Today, Nussbaum is internationally recognized as one of the great artists of his time, and his paintings have been appreciated for both their artistic and historical value. Exhibitions held worldwide have attracted hundreds of thousands of visitors. In 2001, at a Sotheby's auction, his painting Self-Portrait in the Camp reached a value of 1.68 million. His wish was fulfilled. His art has not been forgotten. Starting now, his works are available on our website, so you can have one of his paintings hanging on your wall. I invite you to visit the catalogue, where you'll find his entire collection, along with many other paintings from different artists. Shipping is free worldwide, and you'll find a link in the description. Thank you for staying until the end. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this artist, whether it's the first time you're hearing about him, or if you already knew of him. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to see two art analyses like this one every week. See you in the next video. Bye.